Then we have the Harvester's Vase. Now this is a very different sort of vase. What we have is basically relief sculpture on the vase as opposed to a painted vase. And this is one of the finest examples of surviving relief sculpture from the time, even though it has been broken and repaired. It's only about five inches in diameter, and the original vase was once covered in gold leaf. Now, the reason you use gold leaf is it is exceptionally thin gold. I believe I've talked about it before. It's gold that has been pounded to three to five atoms thick, and then you can apply it to a surface, giving you the illusion of gold. And this harvesting scene, it may be a harvesting scene, it may be a sowing scene, but more than likely it's harvesting. And it's a scene that's very familiar. We find it a lot of examples very similar in Egyptian funerary art, although the representation of the figures is very, very unique. So what we're seeing is it captures movement uh, to a degree that we haven't seen before. The crowd is actually singing uh, or shouting, and it's probably some kind of chant or ritual song. And we have the mouths wide open that give us that idea of them shouting. We also have this very unusual uh, look to their bodies. Here's a little better detail, where we're seeing all of the skeleton or all of the musculature in the body. Now, remember, these are laborers who are probably not consuming very many calories, not much more than they need to basically live. Uh, we see these very sinewy forms. And the detail, for example, in the forearms or here uh, in the underarm, those aren't ribs. That's the latimus muscle, I believe that's it, coming around from the back. Those details also indicate uh, that they're probably doing some dissection. They're starting to look into the human body to get that kind of detail in the musculature. It's not as simple as finding someone who's really fit. And there's also one figure that's very, very unique. As we turn the, turn the vase, we find this figure. Uh, and he's dressed differently. He looks different. He still has that musculature to the arm. But he seems to be singled out. And he's probably a priest or a god who's going along for the religious ritualistic aspect of this festival. He's also more than likely the most important person because even though he's not larger than everyone else, he is substantially different in that he's clothed and he's clothed differently. His hair is different. His appearance is different. So he's being pulled out as being something unusual here. Who he is, we're not entirely sure, but he definitely stands out. And this is what we do in art history frequently, is we're looking for these characteristics that can give us some clue as to what's going on, what's being depicted, and ultimately, what can this piece of art tell us about the society that created it?